Welcome to my channel or welcome back. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining us. If you are returning, you already know it. <laughs> you are fabulous. Welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being with me today. I am super excited about these DIYs, so let's get started. All right, I've got this basket that I got from the Dollar Tree. I've also got a glass uh, cutting board that I almost broke <laughs> from the Dollar Tree. Also, a candlestick that I was actually um, was sent to me by a very special viewer friend of mine. She sent me a ton of them, actually. I have got these succulents that were a dollar a piece at the Dollar General store. How stinking cute. Hello. Can we talk about the fact that they even have the speckled? Yeah, too cute. All right, I've got this knob that came from um, my best friend, actually, and then a mirror from the Dollar Tree. Now, I'm using this black chalkboard paint that I get from the Dollar Tree, and y'all, it works so good. Like, it really is very good paint for a dollar, so totally recommend that for sure. Now, um, I did give this cutting board two good coats of the black paint, and I actually did it on the underneath like on the bottom side of it so that when you flip it over you know you're going to see the black i used my heat gun to dry this stuff I, I painted that knob also black and then i used my heat gun and there will be a link in the description box for that heat gun i always have that there now i took some wire cutters and just snipped off the handle that was on this um basket can't say that it was just super easy to do but as you see there, that little notch, I, I just snipped that off also. And I had a little trouble. I mean, that's a pretty thick piece of wire there. So my, my wire cutters were having a hard time. But I did eventually get it off. It wasn't, you know, like it was just impossible to do. But it wasn't the easiest to do. Now, I took my hot glue, placed it all along the edge of that candlestick. Just a good, good heaping of... Uh, hot glue, flipped it over and placed it on the bottom side of that glass uh, cutting board. I'm then going to place my mirror right on top, put my succulents in it. We're going to take that knob. Now, I started out by just hot gluing this to the top of that um, basket. Now, what made me think that that was going to just stay? I have no idea. I guess the blonde in me. <laughs> so, I took some... Um, Gorilla uh, tape, the, the um, Gorilla duct tape, cut out a circle that I thought was about the, about the size of that knob. I'm actually going to place it on the underneath of that. So it had something to adhere to. You know what I'm saying? It had something to, to stick to. But like I said, the knob pops off. It, it, yeah, it was almost a hot mess. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to actually cut another one and stick it to the one that's on the underneath so that you've got the two stuck together. And that, that Gorilla uh, duct tape is some very powerful stuff. And then I actually glued the knob to the duct tape and it worked out perfect. It stayed on perfectly. So I got a little hot glue around it. I did take my um, brush that had the black on it and fix that up. And there we have it. Farmhouse cloche. How stinking cute is that, y'all? Moving right along, DIY number two, and my absolute favorite of this video. Okay, so I got these little signs at the Family Dollar Store. Um, they already had the shiplap lines in them. I got the truck from the Dollar General Store, and it was like a DIY wood truck is what it actually said on the package. I thought it would be perfect. And then I've got some wood um, letters that came from the Dollar Tree. Now, I just took my cricket spatula and popped off those houses. No, I do not own a cricket. I actually have a silhouette that I never use because it just kind of feels like cheating sometimes. But anyways, I like to um, 
do my own stuff, you know, but I do actually have one. So I have the spatula, but that's neither here nor there, right? Right. Okay. I do keep these little houses because I think they will come in handy in the future for another DIY. Now, I just took my sanding block that comes from the Dollar Tree and sanded these down real good. I take them, flip them over. Now, I did take the handle that was on the back, the part that makes it sit up. I did take that off of the two on the end, on each end. As you can see there, I'm taking a craft stick, placing it long ways at the bottom, and then I'm going to go horizontally at the top. And that's just kind of to like build a spine across the back of these. I want all, th all three of these together. And don't worry, this looks wonky, but I'll end up fixing the back. So no big deal. Um, now, I did the same thing to the other side, just added my hot glue, very generous amount of hot glue, placed my craft stick down, popped the other one in half, and started to build the spine across the top of that one. I just thought if I had the craft sticks going both ways, then, you know, possibly that would help to keep it together. I've got the plaster chalk paint by Waverly, and I give this just one good coat of paint. I'm then going to take my um, antique wax by Waverly and take my brush. And I started out, I was going to put it right down through those shiplap lines, but I realized that there was paint stuck down in those still that was not dry. So I actually took it and now none of the paint is dry. Let me rephrase there. None of it is dry. I wanted this to be wet while I was, I was doing the antique wax. So the plaster on there is actually still um, wet. But I'm taking that antique wax now that I've got those shiplap lines cleaned out and I'm just going right down through there. Just adding it right down through it. I even added a line where the two pictures met. I went ahead and added a line of the um, antique wax. And this is the easiest way to make this look like, you know, shiplap wood or real wood. Just trust me on this. This this turns out really good and it is super, super easy to do. So I then took that antique wax and just went around the edges. I took my brush that still had the plaster on it and then began to just smooth it out, blend it out. I went back, added some more antique wax around the edges, around any of the shiplap lines that I wanted to darken up a little bit. And then I'm just gonna take that brush and go right back over it again. Super, super simple, y'all. And it, it looks gorgeous. I mean, it really turns out great. Check it out. That was so easy. I mean, you cannot mess that up. You cannot mess that up. And if you want it darker, you obviously just add in more of the antique wax. Now, I took my sanding block. I did take this outside to finish sanding it, but I sanded it down real good. I picked up this little knife, this little cutting knife, at the um, Dollar Tree. Now, I started out with it scoring the top of this, this truck, trying to get those um, carrots out of the back of there. I will have to say, I do not recommend that knife from the Dollar Tree because it was not sharp. It, it just barely was cutting into it. I didn't realize that at the time. I thought I was really doing something and I was barely getting it. So, I swap over to my box cutter, my old trusty box cutter, and boom, I cut that thing off in two seconds. It was super easy to do. Took my sanding block, just smoothed that out, sanded that truck down a little bit. Now, I've got this chalk paint by Waverly and it is um, in the color pool. I've also got those letters and I'm going to spell out the word farm fresh. Now, I start out by painting the letters in my black chalkboard paint. I then paint the truck with the pool color. Such a pretty blue, y'all. Such a pretty blue. Gorgeous color. Now, I filled in my tires with the black. I then take my brush and I detail this out with the black. Now, when I was done with that, I just wasn't real happy with it. So I painted over it and then it smeared everything. So I painted over it again. <laughs> Got it like I wanted it. I'm going to take the antique wax and I'm just going to go around each individual line of the detailing that is already on this truck. I'm just easing right around, trying to stay in between there where I can kind of make it look, um, you know, distressed, obviously, but really make those detailed lines pop. This turns out great too, y'all. I mean, it was so simple to do. 
You can't, you literally cannot mess it up. So simple. So I, I highly encourage y'all to try this. Those farmhouse trucks are so popular right now. And I just, I hate to see any crafter that's scared they're going to mess it up or, you know, you can't. I promise you can't. It is so simple to do. I took that antique wax and did paint the bed of the truck with that antique wax. Real easy, just super simple. Now, once my truck had dried, I've got these lavender picks that I got from uh, Walmart, and they're really pretty lavender picks. Walmart's got a great, great selection. And the picks are only like $1.47, I think. Now, I wanted to place those lavender picks behind my truck. I've got some of the uh, cubes there. You see the wood cubes that I'm going to put on the truck here in just a minute. But I was trying to spell out Farm Fresh. And then I was going to place my truck on there. And I did not realize that it was going... My lavender was actually... <clears throat> excuse me. My lavender was actually going to cover up the, the majority of the letters. So I decided to take all the wording off. I hot glued my uh, lavender straight to the board. I then took a piece of that duct tape and just placed it right over the top of that hot glue. You're not going to see it anyways, but it was the perfect way to make that stay. Now my truck will go on there perfectly. So I pop out a couple of those cubes, just hot glue those in, you know, just random places on the truck. This is so easy, guys. I'm telling y'all, y'all can do this for sure. Once I got those on there, I'm just going to place my truck right over the top of that lavender. I added some hot glue to the tips of those, those little cubes and then just pop my truck right on. And this is the cutest dang DIY, y'all. It is probably one of my favorites. My, I know it's one of my favorites for sure. I absolutely love this. Another very simple but super farmhouse, super cute DIY. Okay, so I got these two jars um, from the Dollar General Store. One was $2. The smaller one was $1. I have got some florals that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now, I end up not actually using those, but I do have some wisteria and some dripping blossom that came from the Dollar Tree. And then I've got some more of those picks that came, those lavender picks that came from um, Walmart. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, I've got my elephant paint and my plaster chalk paint by Waverly, and then I've also got my Mod Podge. Now, this um, technique, I guess you would call it, did not work out like I wanted it to in the end, but I've actually done this before, and it worked out. So, I'm not sure what I did wrong this time other than probably not letting my paint dry long enough. I, I feel like that's what it was. But anyways, I painted these jars first with the elephant. I then painted them with the Mod Podge. I'm now going to paint them with the plaster. I know it's a lot of paint, y'all, but I was going for a certain look. So I gave them two good coats of the plaster. I get my heat gun super close to that paint while it's drying. And that makes it get crackly looking, which was perfect because it kind of ages it. See how the crackly look? Yes, love it. Okay, now I'm taking my sanding block and I'm just going to sand it down. Now, in some spots, it did work out the way that I wanted it to because what I wanted to do was sand it down and you be able to see the elephant color popping through. But instead... I was sanding it down and taking off like full chunks of paint, okay, where you could see the clear underneath, which was fine, totally fine. It still looks very distressed, very aged, so no foul, no harm, right? <laughs> but 
it's not exactly what I was I had in mind. And like I said, I've done that technique before and it worked out perfect. I actually made a set of um, soap and hand lotion uh, dispensers out of mason jars for a lady, um, good friend of mine, and used that same exact technique and it worked out perfectly. So I'm not sure what happened in this one except that I probably didn't let my paint dry long enough. But anyways, now I took a baby wipe and wiped over it just to get off any of the parts that I sanded. Well, while I was doing that, I was smearing that plaster paint, which I thought was kind of cool because then in the clear spots where the paint had come completely off, it kind of smeared over the top of it and left it kind of kind of hazy looking, you know? So that even more added to the uh, farmhouse or the distressed look of it. So thought that worked out pretty good. Just taking my baby wipes and wiping at it. That's all I'm done. See, they turned out pretty cute. Okay, now I've got some ribbon that I got one of them from the Dollar Tree. The other ones came from Walmart. I just take three of those ribbons, place them together, I'm going to cut me off enough that I can make a pretty good size bow. I just, I wanted it to be cute, but still farmhouse. So I did go ahead and tie a just regular old shoestring bow on there. Got my buffalo check. We've even got a little shabby sheet going on with the, uh, the ruffled looking, um, lace looking, uh, ribbon. I think these turn out so cute tied a smaller bow on the, on the smaller uh, jug there. Jug, Lord have mercy. Jar, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> I placed those lavender picks in there and check these out. Super farmhouse. I love the crackling that looks on there. These are just too stinking cute. All right, last but not least, DIY number four. So for this one, I've got this little sign that I got from the Dollar General store. I think I give like two or three dollars for it. I've got a candlestick that I got from a very special viewer friend of mine. Also some of the little puffy stickers. And then I've got this um, wall sticker that came from the Dollar Tree. I end up not using that, but that's besides the point. A lot of these DIYs, I started out with an idea and then completely changed it. <laughs> it's just the way it went, okay? But that happens to us crafters, doesn't it? Like, it definitely happens to me. Okay, now I started out by taking those um, little puffy stickers and placing those around that st that sign, the, the piece of that sign. But I actually was getting them like all wonky. So I started out by placing one in each corner, then one in the middle of that, then one in the middle of that, and just continued that process all the way around this. And that was how I was able to get them even. Now I've got my silver lining chalk paint I'm going to paint that with, and then my plaster chalk paint I'm going to paint the candlestick with. So I just painted that up, one or two good coats. I believe I did two coats on each. I did go around the little square that goes with that sign, um, just so that I could make sure it was exactly the same color as the candlestick. But as you can see there, I gave everything two coats, dried it all with my little heat gun. Y'all, that heat gun is fantastic. <laughs> I tell y'all that every video, but I'm, I'm serious. Now, I dry brushed the um, little sign that's got the puffy stickers on it with my plaster chalk paint. I then dry brush um, the square that goes with that sign with my antique wax, Waverly's antique wax really, really concentrating on the edges, on the corners. I did my candlestick the same way, just trying to get any of that 
raised portions to really pop out of there and look distressed. Now, I go back over that with my brush that's got um, my silver lining on it. So now it has those both of those colors on there. Really cute. Now, I got these lavender little suck... I almost said succulent. <laughs> I got those little lavender plants from the Dollar General store, a dollar a piece. I'm taking that one portion of the sign and placing it right on top of that candlestick. And as y'all can see there, we have completely changed directions. And obviously, we're not sticking the thing that's got the little puffy stickers in there, okay? Completely changed directions with this one, but it is so unique and I just really, really like it. It's just so different check it out. Uh, it's different. It matches all the rest of our stuff, so obviously it is cohesive, but it's definitely different, and I really, really like it. All right, it's time for the final reveal. I hope that y'all enjoy these. That is it for today. I hope that y'all have enjoyed these. I know that I definitely had a great time doing these. That blue truck is my absolute favorite DIY that I have probably ever done. I love it that much. All right, if y'all enjoyed these video DIYs, excuse me, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share this with your friends and family. Subscribe if you would like to see more DIYs like this and hit that notification bell so that you will know each time that I upload a new video. Y'all be sure and check out my coffee shop where you can purchase most of the DIYs that you have seen done on this channel. Thank you so much for watching and y'all have a blessed day.